welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to be doing the front and back covers on my new florals uh, journal. This is the book that I got last Saturday at my um, Needlepoint Guild meeting and it just has wonderful paper so I've been working a little bit on covering up the um, some of the pages with gesso and many of the pages, in fact half of the book, has uh, blank pages and it has this lovely shiny paper. So, I've decided that the theme of this book is going to be uh, flowers, so I'm going to call it florals, and I'm going to uh, play to my heart's content. I have laid out the large cover focal and some bits and bobs of collage. And what I've decided to do is on the front cover, I'm going to remove the uh, piece of collage and do some background painting. And I'm going, then I'm going to collage this down. In this, on this one, I'm going to collage first and then do painting. So I'm going to take up, and I have, of course, remember to do this so that I can see what I'm working on. Now this is a top, this is a top, this is a top. All of these are laid down as a first layer. Get these out of the way. And I'm going to safeguard with some paper here and here. Now, in order to give myself a vague idea of where the collage is, I'm going to put down my cheat marks just under here. Here. Here, all along here, and up here, and over there. Mission accomplished, almost. Alrighty, that gives me an idea of where I need to my painting. Now since this flower is really a delicious in-your-face red, I'm not going to use the red on this little outside bit. I'm just going to stick with some of the other colors and I've picked those by looking at the colors in the collage from this side. A little pink. bit of light green. Whoops. That won't do. At all. That's better. And maybe a little magnolia white. Let's 
So I'm using my forest green, gecko, fuchsia, a little magnolia white, not too much. And let's see about putting some a little bit of green up here around the outside edge, just a little bit to take off that. Very good, and some down here. Just a little bit of green here, and a little bit up here. Yeah, I use these old brushes that have been around for eons for some of this up here. And some along here. And some more down here. Whoops. Let's see what we have now. bit more light up here. Maybe a little bit here. And some in here. Just a little bit of the darker to pull our eye over here. Let's see. Yes. All righty. All righty, I'm going to set this aside, this water aside now. And my colors. Let's get a little down. For 
first. Oh, doozy. Under bits. I'll do this lovely piece of tissue. Tissue wants to curl. Okay, let's cover this down here now. use this one sheet of tissue that I have so sparingly. And let's get this one down next. Now this is quite heavy, so make sure I give this a good hit of yoo-hoo and a lot on the edges. And they are torn, so they ought to be nice and cooperative. And since this is wide to narrow, I'm going to do this one, like this, and do this corner bit. Some nice quiet pieces. just to put some color, just to put some color on the background. And doesn't this come off nicely just because of that beautiful shiny paper? And then I believe this one is here-ish and this is here-ish. This is here-ish, and this is tucked. Okay, let's do the tuck first.
bigger. Yes. And lastly, this one. I'm going to attach this one and then I'll be back and we'll get some color on top of this. I think it will be ready then. Well, mission accomplished on this page. And now I have used some art guard on my fingers because I've decided that this is going to do best this way. And I'm thinking I'm going to want to put in some green down here. Maybe a little bit of this one mixed with it. more over here and I'm using this shiny paper. Let's have a little bit of this lighter blue down here. These two will work nicely together. They will play well. different effect because of that shine on the paper. But that's fine. It makes the makes things happen on the uh, on the acrylic. That's, a, that's very nice. This is a nice maroon shade that I found that I rather like. It's a DecoArt Americana Napa Red. Napa Red it is. dries quite quickly on this shiny paper. Live and learn.
dark green up here. And well, now some mix of some of these colors with white I think might do the trick very nicely. This needed a, a nice touch of the uh, white added to some of these to play up some of these colors calm them down a little bit. Certainly. This is certainly it. managing to calm down a little bit, which is good. Not too much. Just enough of the yellow, that yellow-green, to play off over here. 
the dark green up here and here for this one. General pink. I think this will do as a first layer. This might be a help over here. Let's just see. I'm afraid, I'm sorry, I'm talking to myself right now, but here. Yeah. Some of the strength out of some of this. Maybe a little bit of a rub over here. Just some down here. All right, I'm going to let this air dry and I'm going to save some of that luscious paint because I love these colors get my Thurber book out. I'll start a fresh, a fresh sheet. pretty. I'll be back. As you can see, I have used another one of my paper stencils and my General's uh, China marker to trace the flower and petals and then used some of the um, same colors that I used over here to uh, give this back of the cover a little bit of pizzazz. Now I need to go back to my uh, tried and true uh, technique to bring 
some depth between this flower and the background. So I'm going to use my Derwent Intense Neutral Gray. And I'm going to put a little along here. And use my a little bit of gesso. Whoops. Much too much gesso. And some water. To move this ink tents. and blend it in. by adding more gesso, I can thin it down and spread it out a little bit, but still make the flower seem to uh, dimensionally stand out from the background. Just going to move around this petal. And I can leave more or less of the gray shadow in places where I think it might naturally be darker. just gives a, um, a finished look that I'm quite fond of. I scrub, scrub some of that Derwent pencil. To bring it out a little bit from the background. some more ink tents, and so on, all the way around the flower. And when I have that done, I'm going to be thinking about what I might want to just add a little touch. I'm thinking a little bit of my uh, Joe Sonia gold just to bring it the background give it a little oomph and uh, that's an art word by the way and uh, I will uh, I will be back when I've reached the top of the flower so I think 
that I'm quite happy with that shadowing color around the outside of this flower. And now I'm going to rescue some of this gesso. Mission accomplished. Now I want to pick a small stencil and get out some of my Joe Sonia. Going to keep this pad of dollar store paper handy. For the stenciling. See what small stencil I'm thinking I probably might go back to my very fine one. I like this one very much and I think it might be very pretty, but this one is much finer. And I'm thinking this is my go-to and my favorite, and since it is the cover of my new floral journal. I think I'm just going to have to have some right there. Maybe right there. And right there. Yes, I think that is just what I needed. Oops. And this little tiny bit up here.
just a bit up there so I'll know that I was paying attention. like it might work there. And there. here and here. I think this should do it. Oops. Yes. Whoa, Carol, don't get crazy now. Daisy. No, not that way. Have a look. think might be at less is more on this front cover. One thing that I know that it needs and I think it look better when I put it there and that is my edging. using Derwent Ink Tents Chili Red to fill up that space next to the flower and I'm not using I am not using um, gesso this time 
I'm just coloring the edge because Durant Ink Tents will do that so nicely. I'm glad I thought of that. Now the back. Something's going to happen on those red and green bits, but right now I'm thinking, should I use some of the same stencil, but maybe with my I use my much loved Joe Sonia on the front cover. Maybe some Target Shimmer Egg. On the back. that this might also, besides making it shimmer, might give some cohesion to the background. Let's just see. my yes. Well, isn't this a couple of happy accidents today? Mm-mm-mm. Mm. Mission accomplished. I'm going to finish this bit again. Then we'll see what will happen to those flowers.
after much play, I've decided that my covers are complete. I used my stencils, the gold on the front and the shimmer egg on the back, and then I used my handy dandy Pilot G2 to outline some of the stencil bits. And on this one, I worked on this central part of the flower a little bit to pop it out a little bit. I used some gold uh, and some, uh, I made a center for the flower. And on the stenciled uh, shimmer egg, I used my white Uniball Signo pen and my blue number 207 to outline some of the stencil parts. This has been a great start to my floral journal. It has been a challenge in some areas. But I do think this definitely says all there is to say about this being a floral journal. And I hope that you have enjoyed sharing this experience with me. And if you have, I do hope that you will give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share with a friend, and I would appreciate your subscribing to my channel. I'm going to do some, have a good close up look at some of this now. It's interesting the way the color seems to shimmer and move. I'm quite tickled with the use of the Derwent pencil to bring the flower forth a little bit. And on the back cover, the many layers of paint and collage and stenciling and painting stencils, and I am very happy the way my very favorite tissue is still showing through, and the white outlining some of the shimmer egg stencils certainly adds a little bit to it when the light isn't catching it in quite the correct direction. And my stenciled flower I'm hoping that you will be joining me again when I work in my floral journal. Bye now.